Hey everyone, it's Lexi and today's video I'm going to be doing the bookshelf scavenger hunt. So I saw this video going around on YouTube and I thought it would be like a fun thing to do now, especially that like come September I will be at school and not have access to my lovely array of bookshelves <laughs> that I have here. Um, so I will bring link the original creator of this video down below so you can go check out her video as well. So without further ado, let's get started. So this was the only book or author um, that had a, the letter Z in it, and it is The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. Obviously, this is probably going to be everyone's, like, book, because I don't have any other books that start with Z or authors whose last names start with Z. So this one is just a quick giveaway there. So this was the only classic that I really enjoyed reading in high school and the only one that I kept. And it was Les Mis um, by Victor Hugo. I really liked this book when I was reading it um, in, I think it was grade 10. I really liked it. Um, and I liked it a lot better than the movie. I'm not a fan of the musicals that sing a lot, like sing conversation the whole time. But yeah, I really liked this book. Our teacher was very nitpicky with annotation. So these books have a lot of it but I kind of want to reread it again because it was only like classical book that I've really enjoyed reading in high school. So I didn't have a book that had a key on it but I did have key in the title and it is Sarah's Key by Tatiana de Rosne and this is like a World War II uh, book centered around basically the roundup of Jews when the Germans kind of occupied France so it's kind of there as well where her brother gets to save like protect her brother they kind of hide her in this little hidden cubby um, and he she when she's in the concentration camp she tries to break out and capture like save her brother so that this one was really heartbreaking and it was the only one that had like a key or like it did have physically have a key but it had a key in the title so I thought that would do So this was something that I actually got the other day in the mail. I pre-ordered it and it came actually a couple, like a day early. So that was really nice and it was this Wonder Woman Funko Pop. And I was a big fan of the movie that came out so I was really happy to add this to my collection. It's really detailed too, which I really like. So it adds some, you know, feminist pizzazz to my shelf that I will keep right up here. So, yeah. So I couldn't really tell like the oldest book, but I think it's probably one of these. This was my mom's copy and my mom and my her sisters will always do like a book swap. So I feel like this one's fairly old and it like, you can tell like it is old. And it is Blood Brothers by Nora Roberts. This is book one of the Sign of Sevens trilogy that my mom thinks I would really like. So I've had it on my shelf for a while, but I just haven't picked it up yet. But like this book I can tell is just really old. Like the binding is like all coming undone and yeah, it just smells really royal old. So I think my mom had this since I was born, or maybe before then. I'm not sure, but this one is fairly old. Like, that was the one that came to mind, because I was like, all these books are relatively within the 2000s. This one's probably from the 90s, from my guess. So, yeah, fairly old. So for a book with a girl on the cover, I went with The Beauty of Darkness by Mary E. Pearson, and this is the third book in The Remnant Chronicles. And this is really one of my favorite trilogies ever, and what I really like about it is just like, I really like this cover. Um, I think it's just really pretty, and I love like this blue is there as well. But yeah, this is, if you're looking for a really good kick butt trilogy, then I highly recommend you check out The Remnant Chronicles. So for a book with an animal on it, I went with Inside a Dog by Alexander Horowitz, and this is basically a kind of informational guide to like the biology of a dog. And so I just think it's like a really interesting, it talks about like kind of what they think and how they perceive like color and all that. And I think it's just really interesting and just like different aspects of their like personality which I thought was just really interesting so yeah if you are a dog owner and want to know more about like what your dog is thinking or just kind of like how why they are the way they are in terms of like why do they pee you 10 times during a walk <laughs> like it talks about it in here so if you are a dog owner and thinking about getting a dog I think this is a really good like 
addition to have just because because I've learned quite a bit and I've had a dog like my entire life. So for a book with a male protagonist, this one was actually pretty hard because like 99% of the books I read have female protagonists in them. Um, but this one was one that stood out for me and it is The Still Life by Louise Penny and this is a Chief Inspector Gamache like, detective series and he is really interesting. It takes place in Quebec so it does have aspects of Canadian culture so if you're Canadian like me then this one would be very perfect for you um but i really like it he's very different from what you typically see of male detectives he's very soft-spoken and he listens and he's not overly masculine like he's not like you know like hardcore but um yeah it's really fun i really enjoyed this book and i cannot wait till i finish more books on my tbr so i can get more of these book series because i love them So for books that just have words on the cover, I went with The Last Letter from Your Lover by Jojo Moyes. I haven't read this book yet, but all of her like books in like this edition only <clears throat> sorry, only have letters on them. So this one was pretty easy. But this one is when Jennifer wakes up in the hospital in 1960s um, after a car accident. Um, and she tries to find clues as to what happened and then in 2003, Adriana kind of stumbles upon these old letters, so it kind of takes off from there. This is definitely one that I want to get to over the next like couple months, so yeah, I'm really excited. I have two more of our books on my shelf that I need to read, so yeah. So for books with illustrations in it, I was originally thinking of doing like the illustrated Harry Potter editions, but then I also was like, oh, they just released a new like 20th anniversary editions of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. And so I went with this one because in the beginning they also like, I have the Gryffindor so, like paperback, hardback, and I also ordered the Ravenclaw editions as well. Um, but it also has like these illustrations of like the Gryffindor crest and what's really interesting in these ones um they'll have like Gryffindor and introduction so they have like basically more about the founders of each house so they have illustrations in here which I thought was really interesting um so they have like these and just like the symbols and like the house ghost and all that and then they also have a picture of like the grounds which I really liked but yeah I also am a big fan of these spray painted red edging of this book so yeah I was like once I saw it I had to get my hands on it because it was just so pretty for gold books with gold lettering I went with the Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them screenplay by JK Rowling this was like the first one that came to my mind and I had to like it's so beautiful this is probably one of my favorite covers I always have it showing out this way on my bookshelf because it's just so pretty I love looking at it but I really love just the gold detailing and I this is like my favorite color blue so I really like that yeah, it's really pretty, so I cannot wait for the screenplay for the second one to come out because I feel like they'll do like a really good job with that one as well. So for a diary, I went with one that was nonfiction, and it is Lucky by Alice Siebold. And this is her basically memoir of her time when she was a freshman in university and she ended up getting raped and just how that basically turned her life around. She talks about her life before the rape and how everything changed right after that. It also goes through like the trial and just all that. This is a really, really hard book to read because the author does not sugarcoat anything it's it is very, like I said it's very hard to read but I think it's something that's very important to show just in terms of rape culture um, so don't read this until you're maybe a little bit older because it it is so graphic but I think it's very important just not only as like for shedding light on rape culture but also kind of a feminist read as well and it was I was really moved reading this So for this one, I went with Nora Roberts, who, like, I think Roberts is a very common last name, and this one is Dark Witch, and this is the first book in the Cousins of Dire trilogy. So this is, like, an adult fantasy series about 
the cousins who have these powers that are witches and they have to overcome like defeat the sorcerer <clears throat> sorry i'm losing my voice the sorcerer once and for all that's been haunting their family for centuries so if you're looking for like an adult fantasy series and i highly recommend you check this one out it had a very harry pottery feel to it so yeah i was a big fan of this one For this one, I went with Harvest by Tess Gerritsen, and it has a close-up of a needle in it, as you can see. It's really quite gruesome, but this was like one of my favorite books of ever, so I'll link the review I had of it up here, but it was just really intense. If you're looking for like a really good medical thriller, I think this one would be really perfect for you. I loved it. It had me on the edge of my seats, and the cover is just really, really creepy, so yeah, it is just so good. Tess Gerritsen is one of my favorite authors, and I couldn't praise her work anymore. So for this one, I went with Sapiens um, by Yuval Noah Harari. I always can never get his name, but it's a brief history of humankind, and I was a double major. One of them was anthropology, so I'm all about human evolution. So it basically covers human evolution basically when we're australopithecines and like all that stuff so yeah it, i think this one like neanderthals and like all of that and the out of africa theory and like all this like i'm a sucker for all this so i thought this one would be perfect because it takes place like several million years ago it starts out for basically how humans evolved and like all of that so I think that's really interesting so like 2.5 evolution of the genus homo in africa so i think that's really interesting so i think this one was like hands down like the like latest or like the earliest time frame for a book but yeah i really can't wait to pick this one up it is quite a heavy read so i may just keep it for christmas like winter break so we'll see I actually don't have any hard covers without a jacket on them. I'm very meticulous about it, so I was like, I don't even have any. So, none for this one. For a teal or turquoise book, I went with A Court of Wings of Ruin by Sarah J. Maas. This is like, I love the color scheme of this. I think this is kind of a tealy turquoisey, so I thought it was perfect. I love this color. It's really, really pretty. So this one was like the first one that popped into my mind. I looked at the spines and this one, I was like, yeah, that's perfect. So yeah, I think this color is very, very pretty. So I don't have any books that actually physically have stars, but I went with this one that kind of has a starry feel to it, and it's Firefly Lane, and although these are like fireflies, they kind of give off a star effect to them, so this is the one that popped into my mind, but I don't know why, I was like, how do I not have any books that have stars on them, but I don't know, this was the one I was like, this is close enough, so... So this last one for a non-YA book, this is probably the best book that I've read this year and I loved it so much so I just had to include it. It is The Secret Keeper by Kate Morton. I'll link my review for this up below but it was an amazing book. It takes place basically follows Laurel who is 16 year old, who is 16 years old and when she's in, kind of hanging out in the family little treehouse in her yard, this man walks onto her property. He kind of has a confrontation with her mother and her mother ends up killing him. So this is like scarred Laurel for the rest of her life. She hasn't thought about it since until basically present day when she's, her mother is on her deathbed and this picture kind of comes, like this picture kind of, I guess, gets brought up and it has a connection to the man that uh, Laurel's mother killed. So she's trying to uncover the past and what happened to this. This book, I could not recommend it anymore. It is amazing. So please, please, please go check it out. You won't be disappointed. So that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and I will see you guys next time. Bye guys.